Hi guys, I am going to demo a masking fluid application technique for you using a G-nib instead of a paintbrush. Um, this is a fun class that I've taught several times at Wet Paint. Um, and it is a very easy way to apply your masking fluid and get details. Uh, without damaging a brush. I am using the Holbein masking fluid. They call it masking ink. Wait, fluid ink? Okay, <laughs> old bottle, new bottle. And uh, this has a very nice viscosity. It flows off the nib well. Uh, it's not too thick. Uh, that's why I like that line in particular. I am using uh, one of these little cups uh, to hold my masking fluid. I just have it on a kneaded eraser so that it's at an angle for dipping. And I just press that down in my work area. I have a couple pipettes, uh, this longer one and this short guy. These are, I believe, both by Jacquard. And then I have a rubber cement pickup, which I will use later to remove the masking fluid once the watercolor is applied. I'll show you a couple pieces um, of finished work so you can see just how just how much detail this allows you to get. Um, take this out of here. So you can see in the nest here, I was able to get some really, really fine lines. And this is all with one uh, nib. And that's, again, the G-nib. Uh, which is a very popular drawing nib uh, for all of these uh, lines in the masking fluid I've used the G nib even the thicker lines you can really get some flexibility there uh, as you can see it's pretty striking on a dark background you can get a lot of detail and then this, I tried it on a handmade watercolor paper and it worked pretty well. There, It was very fibrous. You just want to be really careful when you remove it. Um, otherwise, these are on uh, sheets of the Hanamule Britannia and then the Robin uh, is on a sheet of arches. Just regular cold press. Um, and today, ooh, sliding around. I'm using uh, Fluid 100 6x6 six six block and I have it on this little cigar box hopefully to show the detail of the application e a little easier. I'll hold it up too. So like I said this one has a really nice uh, easy viscosity. I have a little bit of water for cleaning tools. You really just need to wipe this off with a paper towel every now and then if it starts to get um, built up, which you will see. Hang on one second there. A little blob at the bottom. Okay, so this is probably way more than I'll need for this application today. Because this is just going to be a quick little guy. see really how much I've put in there it's not a ton you don't need a lot it goes a long way and then while this is wet I'm just gonna put a little water in the pipette to clean it out oh I wanted to show you one more piece it's in the back of this other one Oh, here it is. This one was really fun. This was the last uh, masking technique class that we did at Wet Paint. We did a mosaic technique. So you could even try something like this. You can see it looks good on lighter backgrounds as well. Um, but for me, I think the more white you add, the more mask you add, the more striking the result. All right. 
great. So I just slightly tap the nib and the fluid. This is about how much is loaded on there. Probably for every application, it's not a ton. Uh, it will take practice to draw with these nibs, but uh, you'll get a hang you'll get the hang of it. Promise. So it helps to press a little bit. I just drew a really little outline of a bird shape I wanted to do. I also like that this masking fluid is tinted so you can see where you've applied it already. Again, that's my reload. If I want thicker lines, I just lightly press. And I like to work drawing towards myself, that's easier. If you do need to overlap a little bit like that, just press a little further on your nib so you don't drag and pull up the masking fluid that you've already applied. I find it's a little easier to do if you don't start and stop so much. These nibs, they, they hold a lot. Ink as well if you're drawing with it. my line there. So everywhere the mask goes, the white will be revealed at the end of your piece. And I'm going to just add a little pattern on this guy. with what marks I can get with the nib and I will fast forward that part and I'll show you the color application and the removal.
Okay, this is the masking application. And as you can see, all the blue is the masking fluid, so that will be what remains white and reserves the color of the page. You may have noticed I wiped off the nib on my paper towel. It's totally clean, no damaged brush there, so that's exciting. I'm gonna let this dry. That will take, I'm gonna guess about an hour, and then I will be able to apply color. Uh, to test if it's dry, I just lightly tap it, and I will show you how I apply the color as well. And we'll let that dry and I'll show you the removal. All right, it has been about an hour and I did hit this with a hair dryer as well to try and move things along. As you can see, the masking fluid does darken as it dries, uh, but it feels, it still feels tacky, but not loose. I'm going to apply the color and then I'll hit that with a hair dryer and do the removal. I'm just gonna do this nice ivory black um, sh uh, schminky just for contrast in the video here. Um, you don't really want to aggravate it, just laying the color lightly on top. You can let your masking fluid dry on your page um, for a few days and still work on it. Um, I've had a piece maybe like in the works for a week. I don't like to leave it on too long because I worry about um, staining, that kind of thing although that's never happened with this brand. There's one brand that has a yellow masking fluid and I have had the color of the fluid left behind before. That was a long time ago, so maybe their recipe has changed. Um, but yeah, I've worked on a piece approximately a week, something very detailed and had no problems removing masking fluid at that time and that was on the same paper so I'm not really scrubbing back and forth it's kind of patting the paint on for this purpose I see a little bit where we need a tiny little more there we go all right Okay, I'm gonna hit this with a blow dryer. Or, yeah, that's what that is. I only use it for art application. Uh, and then I will remove the mask. All right, this feels pretty dry. I just hit it with my hair dryer for a little bit. Um, I will start to remove the masking fluid. I'm going to use a rubber cement pickup, and I like using these um, because they help to keep your piece clean. And you don't want to use your finger because there's oil in your skin that will get on your uh, art paper. Um, so I just really slowly start in one section, and you can see it will start to peel up a little bit on its own.
can see the details start to pop out. If you get little gummies, you can just peel them off. Now you can use your finger, of course, and pull a thread if you get a loose strand of the dried masking fluid. This part's very satisfying. <laughs> I'm not really rubbing the paint where that's been applied. I'm really lightly just trying to get that top layer of masking fluid. When it dries, it's raised a little bit. So I'm, again, I'm not trying to like aggravate the color application here. And then as soon as it starts to peel, you can kind of lift off a corner and it will stick to itself. You don't want to rub too much and rub your color away. It, takes a, it might take a little practice, but... So now there's that little guy. We'll see if we can get some Achilles. You guys probably get the idea. I will remove this mask and show you the uh, finished product after that.